Hey, internet friends, what do you get when you combine lengthy lockdowns, medical mandates, and enhanced unemployment benefits? Well, apparently, by chance or by design, you get supply chain issues, which are now in October of 2021, in full force. The news will tell you that this whole worldwide issue is due in part to the lack of shipping demand in the middle of 2020, when everyone was hitting two weeks to slow the spread on repeat for months from their couch. Reports say that the surge of demand by the end of 2020 led to delays, port traffic jams, and blockages across the supply chain. Of course, the lack of workers and lack of shipping containers that suddenly disappeared from the mix exacerbated the problem. So we have jammed up containers stuck in ports because there is and was a shortage of staff to both unload them and deliver them to their destination. And you know, these medical mandates and these staffing shortages, those are entirely coincidental, according to the news. Early October reports have cited over 500,000 shipping containers stuck off the coast of Southern California. Even in my home state of Georgia, we're experiencing something similar with the Port of Savannah being impacted. There's nearly 80,000 shipping containers stacked up at the docks. And there are reports coming out of the Georgia Ports Authority that some ships were waiting for nine days before getting a slot to unload their shipments. What they're not telling you is that when people stay at home, as they did during government-mandated lockdowns across the world, that of course means that folks aren't working, duh, or at least they aren't working manual labor or factory jobs. And if they aren't working, that means the supply chain isn't functioning as it normally does. And if the supply chain is having difficulty, that means that we, the consumer, will inevitably be impacted. So tell me, have you noticed empty shelves at your local grocery store? I went to Costco today, and while there were no empty shelves, they were all out of paper products like paper towels and toilet paper. But instead of obvious empty spaces, they had those spots filled with cases of water so the average person wouldn't notice. But hey, maybe you're like me, and instead of empty grocery store shelves, you're noticing your weekly grocery bill going up and up and up. A report came out this week stating that food prices across the world have risen to their highest levels in a decade, which they attribute in part to these supply chain disruptions. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, meat, poultry, fish, and eggs were up 8% over the past year and 15.7% from prices in August of 2019. Dairy and sugar prices also rose 15.2% over the last year and 53.5% since August of 2019, while the price of meat was up 26.3% since last year. Of course, I'm reading all these mainstream media articles as I'm making this video, trying to get this exact data, and it's so funny. They're like, well, the prices are up because of the shipping containers, they're stuck at ports, but never do they once mention that the Fed is printing so much money. They're trying to pin this whole phenomenon on supply and demand, not inflation, not these medical mandates that people won't stand for and are therefore quitting their jobs. They're trying to distract from the fact that the government actually is the one who created this whole fiasco in the first place. Instead of detailing that whole timeline, the news cranks out fear in the form of saying that your children are going to be crying come Christmas because there will be no toys due to these supply chain disruptions. If there are any toys available, they're going to be expensive, so it's too bad if your mommy and daddy are poor, and hey, here's some more good news. Experts say that these issues are set to continue well into next year and beyond, giving no indication that things will get better by 2022. So what are you supposed to do with this information I just gave you? Are, am, I, am I telling you to go out and panic buy? To go get in fights with people over toilet paper? No, of course not. That's not what I'm trying to tell you. It's so funny to me that these global warming folks have absolutely nothing to say about a tiny package shipped thousands of miles across the world on 10 different carriers from China, like absolutely just radio silence on that topic. But as your ratchet Nostradamus, I don't see a plausible future in which the future is local, is based around community, because the government has nothing to benefit from that. They don't benefit at all. Government-sponsored monopolies of crony capitalism wouldn't flourish in the same way. And corrupt politicians and lobbying keeps them in that position. But that's another tangent for another day. No, I'm not trying to tell you any of that. I'm trying to tell you that the World Economic Forum told us 
this was all going to happen with their Great Reset. The Great Reset being the name and theme of the 50th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum held in June of 2020. And yes, there are a million debunking articles saying that conspiracy theories surrounding the idea that world leaders use COVID to essentially take over the world economy, those debunking articles say that it's just a silly, goofy idea crafted by village idiots, you know, those QAnoners, those types. But I've been documenting the economic fallout of COVID since before the impacts even hit your average person. When over a thousand CEOs of major corporations stepped down between the end of 2019 and the beginning of 2020, almost like they knew what was coming. Then came the lockdowns where small businesses were forced to close, but Amazon factories and Walmarts were allowed to stay open, essentially enhancing their government-supported monopoly over the economy and totally killing any small businesses remaining. And instead of the government incentivizing returning to work, the government incentivized staying at home with enhanced unemployment benefits. So I asked y'all this question. Do you believe the supply chain is being sabotaged? I received some very interesting answers, and I would like to read you a few of them. LK Native Texan said manufactured. I am in the industrial fabrication business. The only reason for there to be this many breakdowns in supply chains across all of these industries would be an intentional one. Corporations don't like their bottom line to be affected by anything and take measures to mitigate damages. This is one of the problems with crony capitalism. Small guys like me have to suffer at the hands of very large corporations who are nothing more than government entities under the guise of independent corporations. Hawkish answered with a really interesting question, saying that they believe the whole thing was manufactured. And here's what no one is talking about. What is in all these containers? Could this be the clandestine staging of a Chinese military invasion? Thomas said, I've worked in production and logistics for 30 years. Government, not COVID, shut down production and logistics. Global businesses willingly comply knowing that they are too big to fail, unlike Ma and Pa. This is orchestrated at the highest rungs, cause and effect. I'd have to agree, Thomas. Dan brought up an interesting point saying that, yes, he thinks the crisis is manufactured because, well, this didn't happen after the stock bubble, 9-11, the housing bubble, and pretty much every other crisis of the last 30 years. Thank you to everyone who replied, and I actually searched the replies to see if anyone answered no, that they didn't think it was manufactured in their reasoning, so I could read it on here. But everyone was in agreement that the supply chain disruption was indeed a part of the manufactured chaos by world governments. My personal opinion, you know that I think the ruling class wants supply chain disruptions because supply chain disruptions benefit government in the sense that in times of crisis and shortage, government can step in, impose mandates, laws, whatever, and control large sectors of what was formerly considered the free market. That whole series of action would certainly lend itself to the goals of the Great Reset. I also think it's important to look at this Southwest airline strike where Southwest has canceled thousands of flights due to employee vaccination mandate strikes. Last Friday, the Southwest Airlines Pilot Union asked a court to temporarily block the airline's COVID-19 vaccine mandate. I think this whole phenomenon has the potential to snowball and inspire other unions to do the same, which is great for people standing up for themselves and what they believe in, to fight against medical tyranny and authoritarianism. But those same people whom the media dubs anti-vaxxers will almost certainly be blamed for stopping travel, supply chain disruptions, and even completely shutting down society, even though all this was actually brought about by government from the very beginning. I'm going to end this video by asking you the same question. Do you believe the supply chain is being sabotaged? Why or why not? You know, I always look forward to reading your comments. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, and supporting my channel on Patreon, where you have early access to videos and private group chats. Bye.